have you checked the children? Oh, 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 What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Oh, I'm not even sure where I'm looking. Yeah, we're looking Those over there. three lenses. Yes, okay. that's the uh, <laughs> one of the three predator lenses. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're so dead. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the horror show. I'm Cecil Laird. Robert Duell. Jaime and Fuego here. Testing out a whole new camera for this review. Guys, we are down to the last two slash three reviews for our coverage of Hellraiser here, Christmas in Hell. Yes, we it's have Christmas coins. time in hell. Uh, Such pleasures to show you. At this mm. point, though, as you guys are seeing this, we might have two more reviews to record after this, but this is the last one you're going to see, and the reason why is because I wanted to end on a positive note. Now, tomorrow, uh, you will see that the... Now, it's not tomorrow. It is uh, tomorrow you're going to see the first installment of our tier list ranking yes, of yes. the Hellraiser movies. Then you're going to get a Hell, Hail to Stephen King episode on a Saturday. Mm, of course. And then Sunday you will get a tier list ranking of the novels. But today we are actually going to review the last of the novels, which is this. Sherlock yeah. Holmes and the Servants of Hell. Came so badass. Man. This is yeah. not a official sort of canon Hellraiser entry sent out by Clive Barker, but it might as well, Dan. I was just it about to say that. Well it fucking you know might as well be, exactly, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Well, well, and like, also the thing is, the author behind it, uh, Paul Kane, I, mm -hmm. I believe is it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he has been described by both Barker and uh, even Doug Bradley as being the official... The Hellraiser historian. He's the Robin he has, Firth. Yes, he has written books. Yes, good call. Hell nice Stephen King. Good nice name. Like that? You like All that? Right. Yeah, yeah All but right. he, is, he, he has put together <laughs> books about the lore, and uh, he has also been praised by you know writers of many of the sequels, including uh, Dude Who Did Two Through Four, and you know various actors and others. Uh, this guy knows his stuff, and even better, he has also published two previous Sherlock Holmes stories. So. The melding from his mindset mm -hmm. makes sense. Yes. Oh, and he does a fan fantastic job just between like like we we're talking about earlier earlier off camera on just the the research that between this guy has done on both. Had Hell, to have read obviously every uh, Sherlock book. Yeah, every now. Sherlock, yeah, there's so everything many Hellraiser tidbit, everything because he does everything so well and nothing feels out of place even though we are transported. What? 200 years? It's, it's an alternate reality. It's another yeah, turn it's of the another, wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, what, yeah, it's what Fuego would always say. Are you proud of yourself, Fuego? Are you proud of yourself? I have my moments, man. But, uh, you know, I'm just glad that you mentioned it as such because that's exactly what this is. This is a reimagining of the lore and placing it uh, about a, a, a century. Yeah, essentially, yeah, a century almost a century. Earlier. Essentially, yeah, a century. Was, it was, uh, essentially, a century. Yeah, actually, yeah. There's it was, a song it in was, there uh, somewhere. A century. The a late century. 18, <laughs> exactly. Like that's 1890s, right? Yes. 1880s, uh -huh. something like that. 1894, yeah. and okay. then it segues okay, yeah. into a few years after that. But, yeah. but so yes, um, <laughs> we've obviously dived a little bit deeper than we normally do, and gushed a little um, bit. We're like, we're talking about book, this. So this is a book that is obviously melding the Hellraiser lore with the Sherlock Holmes lore. And if we're going to do this review like we normally do our reviews, we're going to start with our overall thoughts, then we'll talk about the story, then we'll talk about the writing, we'll talk about all of the goodness involved in this book. And I got to be honest with you, I was, I was tentatively excited to read this because the, I, I like the idea of Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. I watched... The Robert Downey Jr. movies and the only Sherlock Holmes book I ever read was *The Hound of the Baskervilles*. Same, the only one that I ever read. Only it was one I ever read. Required reading in seventh From grade. School. It really yeah. is. It really is required reading for this book, yeah. and I'm so glad that that's the one that I read. But obviously, uh, uh, Paul Kane is a huge fan of Sherlock because uh, about 30 pages of this book is devoted to Watson mm -hmm. explaining to us how this book fits into the Sherlock Holmes continuity. And if I'm not and mistaken, they're mostly written from Watson's perspective. They, yeah, well, that's what, I, that's what I was just about to say. Yeah. Basically, this whole book is out of journal entries from Dr. Watson. Until it starts to go back and forth. It does yes, start yeah. to yes, jump yes, between... Yes. 
Here's Watson's take. Here's Sherlock's take. Yeah, yeah because and I quite it, like that. It, it becomes Same. more on a, on a real time story. It's it's an evolution of the writing within the book itself, and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that. So again, sticking with our overall thoughts, we're yeah, jumping ahead a little bit. Sorry, I loved it. I really loved it. I had no idea what to expect. I was like, how are they going to fold the Hellraiser universe? I'm like, obviously Sherlock's going to come across the lament configuration. Uh, Le Marchand is like an 1800s guy anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, they're yeah, going to tie Le Marchand in right? with right. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Not only did they do that, they basically shifted the entire Hellraiser story, including characters via Larry, Juliet, and Christy. Kirstie. Mm-hmm. Um, all of them are shifted into the 1800s mm-hmm. along with Elliot Spencer and his wife and a number of other people. Mm-hmm that are brought into the fold, but this is, what if Hellraiser took place in Sherlock Holmes' time of the late 1800s? And it's almost like... It's so great. I loved it. It totally, you will know this, it kind of reminds me of Gotham by Gaslight a little bit in that regard. It's so funny that you say that. That is one of the DVDs I got for a dollar that I did in my unboxing today at the dollar store. I have never actually watched that animated movie and I've never actually... watched that episode? I've never read that Elseworld either. So that's like the one of the only DC animated movies that I've never watched. So I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, it's like basically if Batman was there in London for like Jack the Ripper. Right. Essentially. Who plays a a role in it? So, yeah, Yes, my overall is, thoughts yeah. are I, I loved this book. I was supremely surprised at how yeah. much I ended up enjoying it. I Robert. Loved, I love that alliteration. All right. Do you like that? So. <laughs> supremely surprised with Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, after I got done watching, like, well, real quick, I did love this book. I loved the shit out of this book. Um, and, again, like, uh, obviously the three of us, is The Hound of the Baskervilles was our required read and everything. I did, there was one or two other uh, Sherlock Holmes stories that I did end up reading. I don't really remember which ones they were. Um, but from what I do remember, fuck man, this was a great meld of both modern and the classical stories of what we grew up with and what we, well, in a sense, what we grew up with between Hellraiser and Sherlock. But this was so well done between, like we were saying earlier, the research that this guy had to have done on between both the Hellraiser lore and the Sherlock stuff is he pinpointed and executed everything perfectly. And I was trying to like, I was telling him little tidbits because I ended up reading this before Cecil did. And I'm trying to like tell him little tidbits. I'm like, dude, this book's going to be great. There's kind of this without spoiling too much and everything. I still, I I, I still remember when, when, when you were like, how much beyond those first like 30, 40 pages have you read? And I was yeah. like, nothing. And you were like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this gets crazy. <laughs> but when it like, and I even told them like, within like personally, within the first like four or five chapters, I found it a little, little slow, a little taxing, if you will. Groundwork. <laughs> See, I didn't find that, but, but yeah. But a lot of that, like I felt bequ- between, it was more so on the, because it was it was uh, Watson's journal entries on the explanation of where they got to, but once everything became more modernized and less of journal entries, that's when things really started to ramp up, and that story went full bore, and I couldn't have been happier than what the, what Paul Kane did with this story. Because and I even I even kind of said this to the, to both of them guys a couple weeks back and even earlier today that. Certain aspects of the story, I feel, Hellraiser fans would be easier acceptable of the the Sherlock Holmes lore, versus certain diehard Sherlock fans being okay with the Hellraiser lore thrown in. But these guys kind of like they were like, well, no, not necessarily, and I can see where they're coming from. But on a a more like like singular story aspect. That's more so where I'm coming from on the Hellraiser lore being introduced into the Sherlock stuff. Fair enough. Cool. Fuego. Yeah, uh, rad status. I, I love this as well. I thought this was awesome. And uh, I'm, I am I would actually say that it depends when of an uh, era of Sherlock fan I, I think you are because of the fact that, you know, uh, <coughs> Sir, was it Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, yes. if I remember correctly, yep. who was behind like most of the original stories and then very similar to like a Doctor Who or like so many other British properties where they've allowed continuation of iconic characters and stuff like that. I honestly think if you like horror, you will be totally okay with Sherlock Holmes like joining this reality of sorts, this alternate reality. Well, which, that's 
which which he seeks out and had been seeking out and finally yeah finds and that's what I'm saying like where that that the Hellraiser and the horror fans will be more accepting of the the Sherlock aspect mm-hmm. than the diehard singular Sherlock fans who aren't particularly into the horror yeah and see yeah, yeah. I, well I would just to expand yeah, on that briefly do, I was do, just yeah. gonna say I think there's gonna be uh, three different camps of fans maybe four. Where there's three the Hellraiser least, fans at least three. that say, you know, half the Hellraiser fans are going to be like, this is really cool. Yeah, it actually makes sense. And the other half of Hellraiser fans are going to be like, no, they shouldn't have changed it. They're just shoehorning Sherlock Holmes into it. Mm-hmm. But those are just the typical sort of, you know, Haters. internet trolley kind of people yeah, that aren't that's... thinking about it on a more critical level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I think there's, there's like you say, yeah, of, there's yeah. like you say, there's going to be Sherlock fans that are okay with them folding the Hellraiser lore in, and then there's going to be Sherlock fans that aren't, but Paul goes to such Mm -hmm. extenuating lengths to make sure that it fits within the continuity Mm -hmm. of the actual Sherlock lore. Yeah, Yeah. and (laughs) it's because of his affinity for both property. Yeah, Watson even says, he's like, like, this is something that takes place in between when Sherlock came back from the dead and when he was different. Mm-hmm. Like, this happened, but I never told anyone this story. Mm-hmm. This is really just for me. This is just my journal to get it yeah. out of my head. See, and that's, a nice and that's th- what's really cool and different about this book. This is just, you know, this is Watson telling this story for the benefit of getting it out of his head. Mm-hmm. This is not a story he feels like. He even says numerous times that this doesn't fit within the Sherlock yeah. lore. This was his kind of personal thing. release mm-hmm. and everything to get rid of those demons that he was facing basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just it's super interesting with that approach. Yep. It is, it is. And just to summarize overall thoughts since you guys have said a lot obviously yeah. and praise and everything. Sorry. Yeah. No no it's <laughs> fine. It's fine. I, I, I thought it was awesome and I have loved crossover storytelling when mm-hmm. done well since I was a young kid, especially with comic books. I mean Batman Predator was probably the first that I read, and I adored that. I thought it was so awesome. Dude, when, opening scene. when done well, yeah, with the boxing, <laughs> with, with so the boxing and everything, so so red status. So this is one that it may not have made sense on paper, but once you started reading it, especially with the fact that it's they're, they're both very British properties, you know, with both Barker and Conan Doyle and stuff like that. Uh, I man, I was blown away with how much I liked it. Whether it was super procedural initially, and then avant-garde like hellacious in the back half you know both of them uh, much uh, akin to the they went, gospels yes, like and that's yes, and like and yeah it goes the, big time it does and it, also the but they went books, for it yeah. in a very a proper way without being too heavy-handed because like even like we were talking about this a little bit before obviously the filming of this um the 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 detail on on like the cenobites and like the certain characters and personally, I f- like uh, I felt that it needed those those extra details because they were new characters. There were new xenobites and demons and everything that we haven't necessarily been uh, visual accustomed to. So it, it was a lot easier for creating those new those new creatures. So basically jumping into the story of it all, this is a book that we've kind of alluded to that blends the Hellraiser universe and the Sherlock universe. It takes essentially the original Hellraiser story and moves it back to the 1800s when Sherlock was around and he and Watson are now investigating the sort of mysteries left behind by the Lament configuration. Exactly. With numerous different families, not just the Cottons, but also the Spencers uh-huh. and uh, the and, Thorndikes. Yeah, and exactly. Well, see, and all and, these and like, like I was telling you, you like, talking with you guys earlier, I, I like this part because it was almost like, it wasn't necessarily like, yeah, you could think of it as a shifting of just characters into a different time period, but at the same time, you could also look at it as the ancestral people before our modern story of what we what we know. That's a stretch. But it could go both you know ways what? in that regard. I said the Fuck same you, thing. Man. No, okay. <laughs> Cecil knows that I, I said the same thing to him. Like, it was essentially a prequel, and you're like, well, it was like it's, a reimagining. It's actually their names put yeah. back in the 1800s. Yeah. Although, although, although well. it was funny, though. It's it was Larry like, it was and, like, and, it was and Juliet and Kirstie, but in the 1800s. Francis, that's but, not but, a prequel. That's just shifting everything around. Yeah, but I mean, 
Francis, just try to be accurate. Francis Cotton, you know, and uh, it's they're Frank. Like, and they're like, it was it Frank. Was an, it was, a, it was, a, it was Francis a is English Frank. English it's well, well, you know? well, well I know. And well, but, 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 but there's the older guy right next door who's like. Yo, yeah, Frank's always been, you know, a blah, 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 little black sheep of the family, yeah. and I never liked him. And, but, like, it all kind of makes sense. Well, that's it, why it, it works. And, yeah, does, yeah, Watson lets us know throughout the book how it fits into the continuity, yeah. how Sherlock has been. He's returned from the pseudo, uh, the, the quote-unquote grave, where he fell over the waterfalls with Moriarty, and then um, they eventually took down Moran, Moriarty's last guy. And so that's the point at which Holmes decided it was safe to come back. So that's the era in which this happens. He's come back, and Watson doesn't even know the full story as to how Holmes came back. Mm -hmm. And it all kind of ties in with the lore, and you find out what happened with Moriarty after that confrontation as well. And boy, was that big time. Boy, was that awesome. (laughs) Like, this is just great. This is just... You know, really is... folding in the Hellraiser Lord of the Sherlock universe and vice versa, and, and to me, in such a successful well, way. Well, in, in, in a sense, like even certain uh, Sherlock fans and everything, like taking um, uh, more what what the hell is Moriarty, it? Moriarty, and everything, almost as a closure to his final story. Yeah, which is kind of nice. Well, I mean, they're basically the Batman to the Joker, yeah, like kind sure. of like they, they they need each other. So well, yeah, they, they kind of counterbalance, and that's why they. Just went against each other so many times, and being a big Moriarty person from, honestly, most Moriarty I ever got was Next Generation, where Data had a holodeck version of yeah, Moriarty yeah, yeah. that he went against. That was terrific. Uh, in many episodes, escape the holodeck. Anyway, yeah, uh, you guys can give me props if you like that. <laughs> well, the point is they continue the Sherlock Star versus Trek Moriarty, fan. but within yeah. the context of the Hellraiser lore, mm-hmm. and so Watson and Sherlock are trying to figure out why these people are disappearing with the shape of a box in their stead, and they don't know why these people are just disappearing without a trace. Which is deduced by Holmes very well by the indentation on the floor. Right. Yeah, with so, that first uh, murder scene. Uh, Watson doesn't know exactly what's going on. Holmes has a better idea, but he's keeping Watson in the dark. Typical Sherlock Holmes mm-hmm. and Watson yeah. it's to protect you know, it. back and forth. But, yeah. but it's how it all plays out, and uh, Watson is investigating a Le Marchand who is in a mental asylum and then Watson is investigating uh, or I'm sorry Holmes rather is investigating a, a lead on the box itself and it's just it's really engaging and really entertaining and quite honestly this is a 270 something page book and the last 80 pages were just straight through like they were yeah. boom boom they boom boom quick. boom so like yeah. a third of this book is non-stop mm-hmm. and i think you you mentioned the pacing having a bit of an issue with it earlier i did not i feel yeah. like it was a proper uh, mysterious lead up and then a reveal and then we have a second act where wow you know these guys know more than i thought they knew mm-hmm. and then the third act is just boom the confrontation and all the crazy stuff i'll chalk that, i loved it I i'll liked chalk it. that up to maybe it's been just because it's been a while since i've watched a Sh- or read a sherlock book okay mm-hmm. fair so fair. yeah but yeah i mean story wise and character wise mm-hmm. i thought this book was uh, was aces i i'm i'm again i i agree and like i'm not gonna i don't want to dwell on, on the same subject and everything because it's going to be a just a, a reiteration, a reiteration, <laughs> regurgitation. Yeah, um, no. Like again, it goes back to again. Even talking about my overall thoughts on the story is between all the characters on the the little details of past characters that we get that might might or might not pop up. You know, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know that everything was done so fucking great. I I have no bad things to say about this book. Even between the little characters that we got. Some of them that I didn't know about, and then I'm looking at like, who the hell is this person? So I actually have to go back and Google yeah. the the, uh, the character and everything to help kind of figure out the, his fit and tie. But mm-hmm. even just that little bit, it helps so much and just elevated the story and the characters and just the overall ending of this book. So like, I'm I'm just gonna quick say this: if you guys haven't read this book and you guys are already intrigued into this re- review. Go read this, mm-hmm. especially if you're Hellraiser and or even Sherlock fans. Get your ass up there, read this fucking thing. Absolutely, yeah, most stuff. I would say if you're a fan of either side of the mm-hmm. properties, um, or both, give it I a mean, try. Yeah, 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 most stuff, most stuff. Uh, I I like the fact that the first half was like 
sleuth book and you know follow the trail of clues i thought i i found that very compelling and there's really no chapters that are more than about 10 to 15 pages mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that helps with the brisk pace but then in the back half when it basically like the first half is a sherlock holmes book second half is most definitely a hellraiser book like mm -hmm. more on the clark barker side of things and it's it's when we get into that second half of the story because it is divided into three Gross. chapters but it is like two parts really if you're going to be fair about it three parts Our world, well, well, well three but as i said there's really two parts when you think mm -hmm. about the two places where yes. things take place yeah. and so once you get to the second half that's when it's very barker that's where the chapters are like four to six pages a piece they just if brisk that. yeah, yeah. yeah they briskly yeah. go about it's almost like the the, the speeded intensity of combat if you're really going to go into it because war and recollections of war are a big thing in the story here especially from watson you know mm -hmm. re re remembering his previous time uh remembering his lost wife these are all things that play a part in a very compelling aspect and migrate into the Hellraiser universe intriguingly as well. Yeah. So very, very Agreed. just, Agreed. There, there, there are so many layers to this that impresses me about what Kane was able to put together. Mm -hmm. And Barker didn't like write a story and pass it off to him as, like, as has often happened. This was all Paul Kane's, you know, kind of mm -hmm. concocting in his head. So well, story-wise, you have to give major, major props to the idea for this and the execution being so strong. No, definitely. You know, like, honestly, it's like, if I was to do a reread of this, I was actually thinking about this earlier. It's like, I'd probably, there'd be more detail in this that I initially missed on my first read mm -hmm. that I would get gather on my second and third read. I think names specifically. Especially names, I wonder yeah. if there were names more than a certain soldier mm -hmm. and a certain guy the significance named, uh, named of those, Francis. Those, yeah. I, I wondered. And there's also Henri, Henri our uh, mm -hmm. you know, French guy who shows up who has it another last name, who has a last name that, uh, yeah, means love. Exactly. It means love. Yeah. yeah and I love this book, so that's maybe a good way to... It is, it is. I mean, this, this book is definitely worth glowing about, it's worth talking about, and it's worth you guys knowing about because it is a sort of independent release. I mean, I don't remember ever seeing this on the news or anything but quite frankly in the sherlock holmes lore i think this is great in the hellraiser lore i think this is great i think it should yeah. i think we it just should enjoyed it. more praise than what it gets 100 percent, 100 percent. i'm yeah. very glad we took a look mm -hmm. it is set up for following installments this was mm -hmm. actually published in 2016 mm -hmm. so it's possible that paul kane might be able to revisit this and continue the story from here on out um, and I would be game for it if he did. Yeah, Paul well, Kane, especially with how they ended it and everything, especially mm -hmm. with a couple characters, they could expand it. Mm -hmm. And if you know some of Hellraiser stuff and that what Frega and I were just talking about with you know it means love, that character could be expanded more, even even more. And I've said it before on my Hellraiser reviews, some of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one in particular who shows up in this. Paul Kane is also the guy who is behind. The uh, Hellbound Hearts, mm. plural, uh, and, oh, and, okay. and anthology. So he didn't. Th he didn't that's write the thing. Them all. He, yeah. he didn't write them all, but he, he is the one it. who curated mm -hmm. it. I think he writes at least a story or two, if I'm not mistaken. We are getting to that at some particular point. Uh, you know, well, they will have seen that review summer. yesterday. Yes. Oh, okay. So you guys already saw that. Okay. We will be so so we're all later, obviously yes. cutting this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. We're gonna keep it in there. But we recorded this review after because I knew this book was gonna be good. I wanted to end on a good note before we get into the the tier list rankings. So stay tuned for those tier list rankings. Two of them coming. Thank you very much for joining us today, you guys. We greatly appreciate it. Have a Merry Christmas, because tomorrow, I believe, is going to be Christmas, if all of my scheduling goes correctly. If it's not, Christmas time in hell. But uh, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. Go tell Santa what you want for Christmas. Oh, boy. <laughs> we had such sights to show you I've been having for you. And remember, stay scared. <laughs>